Hello and welcome back to the Sharks World, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully all is well in whatever part of the ocean you happen to be in at this time. This video is going to be a little bit shorter than the others, as we are simply going to be doing a 2022 update on the International Shark Attack file. I'm going to be giving you updates on the big three in regards to shark bites, and I'm going to be going a little bit more in depth in regards to how this data is used, as other scientists have pointed out before. Before we get into it, I would like to once again extend an invitation to join the Sharks World Discord and encourage you to like and join some of my other content. Thanks in advance for your time. And with that out of the way, as always, ladies and gentlemen, grab you a Celsius, have a seat at the table, and let's take a look at the 2022 statistics for shark bites. So, with the bite statistics in regards to the big three, we'll start with the great white shark. And something happened that I never thought I would see in all my years. Compared to last year, the great white shark had 297 non-fatal bites, 57 fatal bites for a total of 354. For the year of 2022, the bite statistics went down? Let me explain. For the year of 2022, the great white shark has 292 non-fatal bites, 59 fatal bites for a total of 351. So the non-fatal bites went down, but the fatal bites went up by two. As strange as that is, I think I might know as to why that happens to be the case. I have no evidence to prove it, but it will kind of segue into the point I want to make after these statistics. But for right now, let's put a pen in it and move on to the tiger shark. In 2021, the tiger shark had 102 non-fatal bites, 36 fatal bites for a total of 138. Last year, the non-fatal bites went up to 103 and the fatal bites went up to 39 for a total of 142. Funny enough, when it comes to the bull shark, the same thing occurred as with the great white. In 2021, the bull shark had 95 non-fatal bites, 26 fatal bites for a total of 121. For as of 2022, they had 93 non-fatal bites, 26 fatal bites for a total of 119. So overall, the bull shark went down as well. The fatal bites remained the same, but the non-fatal bites changed. With those numbers on the table, let me go ahead and segue into one of my points, which is the use this table with caution section in the International Shark Attack file, specifically the species implicated section. It says there, that species aren't always able to be identified. So when an attack is attributed to one species, then upon further investigation, it is discovered to be a different species or a different cause entirely, then the numbers go down. This is what I believe happened with the great white and the bull. At first, because they're very easily identified species or the, the only sharks that come to mind, they attributed to either the great white or the bull. But upon a further investigation, it was discovered, hey, these sharks are not responsible for these particular incidents, and so the numbers went down. At least that's my theory. But to my second point, I want to add something to the conversation in regards to this use with caution section. More food for thought. A lot of people say that, hey, the international shark attack file isn't relevant because we don't have all shark attacks on record, or we can never know. And that's true. We have no way of knowing each and every single incident that took place when it comes to shark bites. But here's what I will say in regards to it. Let's say for the sake of argument that we did have this oh so powerful wand and we were able to wave it and we had all statistics and all shark bites on record. Using what we know as far as what we do have on record, the numbers would not change that drastically based on what we have. Because in science, 
there is this thing called a predictive framework. Whereas when data is lacking, we are able to use what available data that we have in order to come up with a predictive pattern as to how things would change. So with the numbers that we have, if we were able to know each and every single shark attack that happened, I would argue the numbers would not change that drastically based on the numbers that we do have. The thing people often get wrong about science is that there's always going to be a yes or no answer. We're going to have always every single bit of available data. We are always going to get things right. That is incorrect. Science is often written in pencil. It is done by hypotheses and it is done with whatever data is available and using said data to come up with a predictive framework either in a controlled environment or based on what we've already seen and what we've already known. It's not always something you can give an elevator pitch to, but that's just the nature of the beast. These shark attack files are the same. Some people might think that's a cop out, but remember, here in the shark's world, we are empiricists. And as empiricists, we are always asking one question. What are the facts? What do the numbers say? And all we can go off are what numbers that we have. Can things change? Sure, but right now, all we have to go on is what's on record. Now mind you, you should still adhere to the table and use it with caution because people have been wrong before. Obviously with the numbers of the Great White and the Bull Shark changing, and they may change again for this year, but we must always go with what the numbers say as a predictive framework, not for the end all be all. One final thing I would like for you people to keep in mind is something that I brought up in the last video on Shark Week versus Shark Fest, and it's the media fudging the numbers to make things look a lot worse than they actually are. You just saw it for yourself. The Great White Shark, as far as fatalities, went up by two. The Tiger Shark went up by three, and the Bull Shark didn't go up by any fatalities. But technically, those numbers did go up by like 20 some odd percent, just as I pointed out in the last video, which sounds way worse than attacks going up by two or three. Now, I do give my condolences to those who did or who knew those who died from those attacks. But I'm curious, what are your thoughts and questions in regards to the international shark attack file or any thoughts and insight that you might have in regards to it? Let me know in the comments below. This is going to be where we end things for this video. A bit shorter than some of the other ones, but this is just going to be a yearly update when it comes to the International Shark Attack Files. So, thank you once again for giving me some of your time, and I will see you in the next video. Until then.